Did you know that 95% of all rental properties fail? And you know why? That's because real estate investors don't know what they're doing, they're hobbyists, and they're missing all the strategies on how you find a good enough deal to actually produce the cash flow. Actually look at the property and say, wow, I'm proud of the money that I'm making on this. Today's video is gonna be essential for your success as a real estate investor, so you don't have to go back to this. Check it out. The last thing you wanna do is become a failed real estate investor. Hopefully you're a subscriber to my channel and I am teaching you all of the Jedi ways of how to successfully invest in real estate. And I have to tell you, recently I was chatting with some of my students and I heard some alarming stories about how they bought a deal that they thought was good and I'm looking at the numbers and I'm like, how are you gonna make money on this? I think what you did is you just bought a property and said, yay, I'm an investor. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not how we do it. So it kind of prompted this. Today I'm talking about six strategies for finding the best investment property. Please, if you're one of my students and if you're not, do these six things so I don't have to look at you and say, son, you just messed up real bad. The last thing you want to do is become one of those new real estate investors that becomes a don't wanter, meaning, uh-oh, I bought a property and I'm renting it out and it's, uh, there's no leftover money. In fact, it's costing me money. I'm dishing money out. How is this sustainable? How is this going to work? And it's not because you did some things wrong. So the six strategies for today are to help make sure that that doesn't happen. And here's the first one. You've heard this adage, location, location, location. Let me tell you why this is really important. I could literally show you how to buy a property in San Francisco for $1.2 million because that's its median. And for the same income, you could move down to South Texas and buy a property for just over $100,000. In other words, not all real estate is created equal and all locations are also not created equal. There are some places where you buy real estate where you will get better performance and there are other places even inside a town where you're going to get worse performance. For example, not all neighborhoods are created equal. Choosing the best location for your needs is key for both quality of life and future resale value. Even in the same town and compared to homes of a similar size, the specific neighborhood of a property can affect its value by 15% or more. One of the first properties that I ever bought was right across the street from the railroad tracks. And it was the cheapest property literally for, like, I picked it up for like $100,000. That home today is probably worth $350,000. But I had to buy it, I had to put money into it, and I kept trying to put renters in it. And you know what? I don't know what it is about being on the wrong side of the railroad tracks, but I had a hard time attracting a quality of family, meaning, you know, educated, good job, good income, that wanted that house. Turns out, I learned from this house that even though I sold it and made a profit, made over 50 grand on it, I was buying in the wrong part of town. If I had bought on the right part of town, my profits wouldn't have been 50,000, it could have been $100,000. Have you ever heard the phrase that the riches are in the niches? Well, in the game of real estate, if you're gonna start as a new investor investing in your backyard, you gotta be looking for a niche. Not just location, 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 like we've talked about the parts of town, but check this out. We're talking about parts of where you live where you might get some type of unfair advantage. And guess what? They always exist. Here's something that often gets overlooked. Find out if there's any part of town that favors your personal financial strategy. For example, some parts of a city may qualify for low or even 0% down payments, as in the dude that I really like holding this camera just put an offer in this morning on a piece of property that qualifies for 0% down. Or, whereas others face rent control or building regulations or short-term rental bans, you gotta make sure that whatever your strategy is, that it makes sense and works for the part of town or for the area that you're in. My brother, he bought a property close to where I live and he took the back half and he basically like put a shipping container on it that he converted into a house. The city found out and said, we do not support short-term rentals. I remember he's in like $35,000 into this and I warned him, I said, bro, you have to check your local regulations and guess what? He has not made a penny on that yet. Just goes to show that you can unknowingly, unwittingly go into parts of town and make a mistake that cost you everything, or you can do this. You can look for the advantage. Let me share one with you right now. Let me tell you about the second house that I bought. 
It was in Pleasant Grove. It was just one city over from where I bought my first house. Now, my wife and I were living in the first house. We were renting out the basement. So we had house hacked our way to not having a mortgage because the basement rent covered the entire cost of the home. When we bought our second house, we found one in the city nearby. And it was, it was a huge house compared to the house we had. It was twice as big. It was like 3,000 square feet. It was a lot newer in age. It had six bedrooms, three bathrooms. And I was thinking, man, this is a really nice house. But here's what I loved about it. I loved the deal because it was a foreclosure and the bank was willing to let it go at like half value. So I got this crazy discount on it. Well, the problem with the house is that it was on a crazy busy main arterial road, which for most people would probably be a disadvantage. But for me, it was actually a huge advantage because I used a strategy in the beginning to build my wealth called rent to own. It was a compassionate financing strategy where I would do a lease option on the house and the option was for someone to be able to buy the house down the road. Well, this was definitely one man's trash that was definitely going to be a treasure for me because I put up a couple of signs, uh, you know, marketing this rent to own scenario and my phone lit up. I got phone calls like crazy. It was so easy to run open houses because I had traffic to the home. Now, I made sure that the backyard was fenced in so there was safety from the road for the family that moved in with kids, but I owned that home for a period of time and when I sold it, I made over $130,000. For me, busy roads with that strategy, well, that was a good thing. Let me give you an insanely awesome tip on how to find a particular area where your home's gonna perform better. It actually has to do with the type of grocery stores in the vicinity. Listen, this sounds crazy, but there's actually data and statistics to back this up. Nearby stores are good markers for both the type of neighbors you will have and the trajectory of your local market. For example, having an Aldi in your zip code is associated with 60% flipping ROI. In other words, if you know Aldi, like it's not a super nice store, it's hugely discounted and whatever people it attracts in that area also attracts getting deeply discounted homes where you can have success flipping property. Well. Trader Joe's, which it's nice, it's upscale, it's linked with a 37% home equity ownership compared to 25% average everywhere else. In other words, people that live for whatever reason in the vicinity of Trader Joe's usually have more equity. They probably live there longer, they pay it down longer, they have nicer down payments that they put down on it, all because of just being in the vicinity of Trader Joe's, well, this is one of those strategies that can put you in an, in an area where your house ends up performing a lot better. Okay, the fourth strategy, let's actually talk about the value of buying a home in a school district that has a really awesome reputation. You realize that homeowners are consumers and one of the things that families really focus on is education. They literally wanna be in the better school district. They wanna know where are my kids gonna get a superior education. Even if you don't have a family, being near good schools is a good investment. Homes in high rated school districts sell faster. They get 28% more listing views, which by the way, that is not a small number. 28% is very significant and they're priced 42% higher than low rated districts. In other words, you literally are gonna probably sell your house faster. You're gonna make more money just by being in a really good school district. Man, when you buy a home in a neighborhood, you have to ask yourself, do you have the nicest home in the neighborhood? Do you have the trashiest home in the neighborhood? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, there is some outright junk garbage that's out there. And you also have your ultra, ultra nice homes. What are you actually looking for if not this and not some of that? Real estate investing is all about finding the right deal. A good rule of thumb is to find the most rundown house in a good established neighborhood. In other words, like find a neighborhood that is desirable. Find a neighborhood that is within the path of progress. Find a neighborhood in that sweet location where people are like, well, that's up and coming. They've got the newer district there. They've got nice schools, all of that. But guess what? If you are the smallest house in that neighborhood, the others will bring up your value. And if that house has problems, if you get your hands on it and fix it up, the values of the surrounding real estate will actually build it up as well. Check it out. The sixth and final strategy that I want to share with you today, I have definitely saved the best for last. It's called the power of networking. As in Chris, where did you find some of your original deals? And how did you learn some of these strategies that had superior ROI? How did you make as much money on the deals that you did? I got news. It wasn't just found in the deal itself. It came from the people that were suggesting strategies, ideas, and particular properties. 
The best way for you to find the best deals in your local market is to ask people who are already there. For example, you could be an active community member, part of organizations, you could network with property managers in your area, people who live in the neighborhoods, even real estate investors, there's clubs, even real estate mentors. Basically, you wanna associate with people that are involved in that game because guess what? They keep their ear to the ground and they become aware of houses that become available on the market, why certain things might be better deals than others. They start giving you insider scoop or information on certain neighborhoods. This was a huge help. And when I think about the first 25 homes that I bought, several of them came to me through the power of networking, which is why I'm gonna share with you perhaps your most powerful networking strategy you're ever going to receive. Imagine if you knew somebody who had done billions of dollars in real estate, thousands of projects, and basically had all the resources and all the team to take you into the best markets and transact the best real estate. Like how cool of a hookup would that be? Right now, you literally might be watching me for the first time ever, but here's the truth. If you click a link in bio, you have a shot of getting proximity to me. Literally filling out the information and talking to my team and saying, hey, I wanna be in the running to be vetted to see if I could be partnered with Chris Crone. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you've got money that's collecting dust in a 401k or an IRA or equity in a home, and you wanna take that small little nest egg for your future and grow into something very meaningful, millions of dollars, then I actually might be the one to partner with you, take you into the best markets, use my best strategies, and most importantly, produce the highest, safest ROIs. If you're interested in that, click the link below, fill out the information, if not, maybe now's not the right time, then you know what you should do? Should definitely subscribe to the channel and let me keep teaching you how to be a financial boss in your own world. This just in, you found a really good deal and now you wanna know, ah, what do I do with it? Like, do I put a renter in it? Do I do something else with it? Chris, help me. Well, I made a video right here that will show you exactly how to do that next step.